So this is the state you want to be in and in order to get here you need to take obviously the tank off but also a lot of stuff which is in here. Now I took more because I'm doing more stuff than just the valve clearances. But what you need to take off is actually obviously the cover but also all the bracketed all the electronics. This is the pair valve and this is the terrible heat shield which is actually under there. So all that needs to go out and that is the time consuming part of the valve clearances. Drain the cooling system and remove the hose from the radiator. No, you don't need to drain the cooling system and remove the hose. It is possible to do this without actually doing that. When taking the cover off, this can be pretty stuck. So gently tapping all over the place, it will give way at some point. So once you have the cover off, you take feel gauges and you measure the valves. Slot it between the rocker arm and the shim and that will give you the reading. Do it a few times. Uh, ideally, turn the engine a few times, do a few measurements if you are consistent. So when it comes to measuring the valves, you put the engine in a correct position. There is a, um, there is a nut here down there which you rotate and it rotates the sprockets to the correct position. Uh, which opens and closes the exhaust valves, which are in, a, in front, and the intake valves, which are in the back. Take the feeler gauges, and the intake valves are um, 0 0.16 plus minus 3. So 19 is the maximum, and I'm going to check if the 19 actually goes in or not. Take the feeler gauge and try to put it in. Oh, that goes quite easy. That's, nine, that's 20 definitely. That's 20 definitely. This one is a little bit, now it goes in, 20 definitely. And the last one, the last one doesn't go in. Yeah. So that is probably 19, 18 or something. So that is within the spec. These three are out of spec. And that's all, what is it about really? And then you can pull the shaft out like this. Snaps on. Let's take it with the hand. So to measure the shim, we need the, a micrometer. This is the really old one. This is zero. And then you go, this is 0 0.5, 1.5, and so on. And now, so that's 32. These shims are beaten up so they don't have actually the markings on them. Every single shim has a marking on them. So now I can exchange the shim and see if the gap is gonna be within the spec. So I'm gonna put the shim in. Let's click then. Let's put just a little bit of oil on top of that. We put the the rocker arms back. I like it to do it with the tweezers and I slide the shaft back and before measuring the shims again we need to put it in a correct position again which is that the exhaust is open there are markings on the uh, sprocket wheels here you align the sprocket wheels uh, into the correct position there's a position for the exhaust and there's a position for intake the good news is that I made the measurements correct and I have changed the intake shims and I'm now on 115, 117, 115, 116. So it's all within the spec. Okay, that was the valve clearance check. In the manual it's described quite well and uh, on the internet there are few people from the CB500X forum who did uh, either PDF on it very, very good and also the video uh, on the YouTube. Just a few things to mention is if you get the feel gauges, this got only the 0 0.05 steps. So in order to measure 27, 
uh, you cannot measure that with these. Uh, what I got is smaller one, smaller set, which has 0 0.01 steps. And you then have to join two field gauges together. And obviously it's much more fiddly than just putting one in. So I'm not sure which one is more accurate or not. Um, these are the shafts from the rocker arms. So the rocker arms sit here and they kind of do this. So you take them off and you slacken them to take the shims out. This is how you take them out. So they have these uh, caps. You take this one off, so then you have some way how to take it out. So you have six millimeter bolt and you just, you just screw it inside the shaft and then you can pull it out. But one thing again is that because you have to move the engine into the correct position, if you, for example, are taking the, um, the shaft from the intake and you have the engine in a position of exhaust, it's gonna be really tough. And you know, turning this is gonna be really difficult. Now I did that actually, and was really scared that I changed the timings or something. Um, they just rotate, they just really hold the two rocker arms. Uh, so there is no damage. Um, you will need this guy, a uh, micrometer to measure the shims. Uh, without that, it's impossible. And another thing which I would recommend making or having is the magnetic tool to take the shims out. Um, I made one from the screwdriver and a few uh, magnets. So I just use this. Um, duct tape it around it and then get it out. Um, that was the um, valve tolerance check and changing the shims. The shims itself are quite expensive so make your calculations correct and um, do that. It is not a difficult procedure, it's just that what takes time is taking the bike apart and then um, measuring the shims is actually okay, changing the shims is okay. Uh, once you do it two or three times it's gonna be pretty quick. And by the way, I don't really know why these are there, and they are pain in the ass to get on.